higher education, the three revolutions, 1945 to, let's say, 1980. We've got a revolution in college attendance. We've got a revolution in financial support. We've got the triumph of the professorate. College attendance. The GI Bill of Rights kicked it off. Born out of a concern for economics. We don't want all those out-of-work people marching on Washington. we got to have something in place for them. Let's try this deal that will let them go to school so we can get them to school. That way, industry can catch up and have jobs ready for them when they graduate. We were returning to peacetime economics. We wanted a place to store a number of those veterans until jobs were then ready for it. How to avert civil strife, veterans, and jobs. Then we had the swelling of the post-secondary ranks. GI Bill succeeded beyond its wildest dreams and was goosed along there by Zook and his people. Many enrollments begin to double from 43 to 56. Hello, married student housing. Hello, Quonset Huts on campus. We got one right across the street here. They call it the Field House. Why haven't they taken that thing down? Probably more expensive to take it down and rebuild it than it is just to leave it. Then, hey, as long as the rain's not coming in, it's just fine. Higher education for America, for American democracy. Here comes Zook. Uh, expands the definition of who should be educated gives birth to something that we know today as the community college concept. One that will, will get you into a four-year college if you want. It'll give you a terminal vocational occupation if you want. It'll simple, simply teach you something, how to play bridge if you want. A place to meet, a place to hold meetings, a place for committees to get together. What we know and love is the community college, anticipated by Zook. And the beat goes on. Financial support, we have greater federal and state involvement now. We've gotten over that loss with the Dartmouth College case. Uh, the private schools Received, received less than 1% of the money in 1940. They received 23% uh, in 1970. Now, that's not supposed to happen, right? Those are private. They're supposed to be supporting themselves. But yet, money is getting tight, and so they need more money. They are keeping, in essence, folks from attending the public schools. So. This is that violation that the New York Free School Society got into. This is private entities accepting public monies. Smart lawyer can go a mile and a half on this. Uh, public increased from 10% to 17% during the same time period. Remember that money comes with strings. You do this you got to behave the way we want you to behave. Federal research money, largely taken in by an elite few. This is probably due to Vannevar Bush and his pushing of, hey, federal government, let's let the colleges and research universities be your research arm. Ten schools take in 30% of all that federal research money. 20 schools take in 45 to 50 percent, and there's been little movement in that. Little places like Texas A&M University Commerce are, are not in the University of Wisconsin, the Yale, those places. Uh, MIT that are designed for super, 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 super research with super, 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 super expensive equipment. So there's been little movement with that. 
the state money goes mainly to support public institutions in proportion to enrollment. The more, the more students you get, the more money you get. Hence, we're all falling all over ourselves to get students with the hope that we'll then get more money. Uh, and, and what normally happens is we're all trying to deal with more students than we're financially equipped to handle. Private sources and, and endowments initially decreased with increasing federal and state money. Now it's increasing when, when we realize that, fe that federal and state money is uh, it's great, but it's, it's still not enough. We still need more. We're still going to ask you to include us in your will. Uh, financial support, more student tuition. Do I have to tell you that this is increased? Do I have to tell you that this is increased even more beyond the realm of what this course is, uh, the years this course covers? We go up to 1972, and hey, we're way beyond that now. And a larger, larger, larger proportion of that money uh, we're still looking for a much larger effect with private institutions. Uh, they don't get nearly as much of the federal money as the public institutions grow. Tuition growth, normally the rate is two times the inflation rate. That was over the 1945 to 1970. The average increase is about 8% a year. That's a lot. That's the average. Now, it doesn't happen every place at every time, but over the United States, the average in increase in tuition has been 8% increase per year. And that doubles about every nine years. Fees are also increasing in recent years. I'm getting you all depressed, aren't I? Okay, let's talk about some. Let's talk about something that makes me happy. The triumph of the professorate, born of increasing enrollments versus faculty shortages. Naturally, we're going to go up in status when there's more and more and more students and fewer of us. Now we're important. Now we need you. 1955 Committee of 15 set 40 as a minimum level for faculty with terminal degrees. In other words, back in 1955, this committee got together and said, how many PhDs should there be at a university? And the answer was 40% of the faculty need to hold them. This sets up competition in the late 1950s, competition to get those people with the PhD or the EDD involves more money. Come to our institution, we'll give you more money. Come to our institution, we'll give you better help. Come to our institution, we have better classrooms, we have better labs, we have better equipment. No, come here. We'll give you a reduced teaching load. Come here. This institution is high on the prestige level, much higher than that institution over there. So we have larger and we have more faculties. That's not facilities. That's faculties. We have larger numbers of people teaching on campuses now than we did back then. We have over 200,000 in 1952-53. Over four, over, excuse me, yes, that is over four, over 500,000 by 1970. Competition increases quality at all levels. Uh, small institutions can now have people on their faculty from Harvard, from, yeah, in my case, from Wisconsin, 
uh, what well, the year two years before I graduated, the graduates went to University of Minnesota, Ohio State, and Brown University in Providence, Rhode Island. When I graduated, I came here to East Texas State University. Uh, another fellow that I was uh, working with went to Ryder College in New Jersey. And another one took a job as a science coordinator in Dubuque, Iowa. So the market went away in the early 1970s. And small institutions now were able to compete with large institutions for graduates of large institutions. The triumph of the professor at Moore, there's support for scholarly work. Much of that money came from the government. Much of it was directed to the sciences. There was some effort in the humanities. Private foundations and corporations were all glad to come on board. Professional societies were created. I belong to the National Science Teachers Association, to the uh, Association for Research and Science Teaching, others, PDK, we won't go into all the others. Uh, a few more, uh, the American Association of University Professors, the National Association for Research and Science Teaching, mentioned them, etc., etc. Uh, more compensation, more academic freedom, tenure is now possible. Uh, at the end of my fourth year here, I was given tenure. That was almost unheard of at the time. Now it takes seven years or, yeah, seven years is up and out. You either are granted tenure at the end of seven years or you are you have a terminal contract and you're asked to leave. New power of faculties change decision making. Now the faculty senate always had to wade in on something. So the faculty is now added to that group of all the king's men, all the president's men. All them bleeping committees, including the search committee. We now have a say in who is hired. So we have come a long way, baby. And college teaching is the greatest job in the world, lest you forget that I said that earlier. We are there. It was a period of unrest and reaction. Life adjustment yields to alphabet soup. Sputnik goes up, we go from one to the other. Emphasis to the disciplines, but... Societal issues make their way to campus. Increasing federal involvement. Money, 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 money will take. Social criticism and violence on the streets and on the campuses. Lyndon Johnson becomes the real education president. The Coleman Report helps provide educational direction. Keeping with the times, education enters a new era of criticism. And that only gets us up to 1972. A lot has happened since. As I said earlier, we have a course in higher education finance. We have a course, a course in higher education administration. Uh, take them. They are good. You will learn a lot. And as the sun sinks slowly in the west, all good little A&M Commerce students bid a fond farewell to higher ed 627. And that Claude Ogden.